Matthew Kane. They were now joined by singer Dan Gillespie Sells, who is gay and was brought up by two mums. Anne Atkins, the writer, conservative broadcaster, and mother of five. And from New York, Andrew Solomon, the writer and gay activist, whose latest book is called Far From the Tree, A Dozen Kinds of Love. Welcome to all of you. Let me start with you, Dan. Um, uh, let me put this to you. Uh, the Secretary of State for Wales, David Jones, at the heat of the debate a few weeks ago, said that gay parents, and I quote, cannot provide a warm and safe environment in which to raise children. You were brought up in a gay environment. How did you do? Fairly warm, fairly safe. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was uh, you know, <clears throat> adorable. I had a wonderful childhood. And, did that um, comment outrage you when you heard? Yeah. It was just nonsense. It made himself sound stupid, I think. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, my experience was that I was loved, I was well looked after. Um, I was, um, I felt like it was normal until I went to school. Mm -hmm. You know, like everything felt right in my childhood until I went to school and then I realized it wasn't the same for everyone. Um, and how difficult was that adjustment process after you realized that it was different? Um, it wasn't terribly difficult. It would have been easier, I think, if we'd had books like that in the school. Um, the media didn't really portray us very well, but actually it didn't, portray the single parent families or the, the, the other kinds of alternative families particularly well either. So, so Anne, is, is Dan the exception that proves the rule? Or um, is there a new kind of reality here that we should no, not I'm not sure he is. I, I ought to start by saying I wasn't asked if I could be labelled conservative. I'm not sure that, that I would a have... A traditionalist? No, not necessarily, no. Um, I don't like being put in any box like that, but that's okay. a, another matter. Uh, no, I don't think uh, Dan is at all. I think it's sort of nonsense that gay pa parents can't provide a warm, loving... I mean, it's patently not true. What I think is interesting is, I mean, you started with your definition of the nuclear family as a two parents, 2.4 children... Well, mum and dad. Uh, and two mum and dad. Children. Now, yeah. that nuclear family that we think of like that is a modern construct, sort of post-World War. It was virtually invented, actually, to, mm -hmm. partly to get to free up the jobs for the men and create the baby boom, and was very successful. But it's a very tiny bit of history, and I agree with you, it's very last century. But if we consider the, the, fam the nuclear family as a family with a nucleus, with an essential nucleus of... Uh, usually a mother and a father, but a nucleus of legally bound together, that is very important, uh, parents and their biological children as a, as a kind of core. Now, that is terrifically important. I'm not saying for a moment but, I want to... Sure, but, it, the key, but the key question is, can that nucleus exist when you have two mums and two dads in your book? Sorry, I don't understand. Can the, the nucleus exist? Can, yeah. that, can that nuclear oh, if core you have, yes, I, exist? Yes, I, mean, I with think two that is actually dads. an alternative form, in a way, of nuclear family. What I think is terrifically important, and what successive governments are ignoring, or you know, this kind of ostrich attitude, is how incredibly important that that definition of nuclear family, by which I include exter extended families and so on, is compared with what are the popular alternatives now, which are, well, divorce was the first popular alternative mm -hmm. from the sort of 60s, 70s, and now cohabitation. That, um, that nuclear family that I've just defined is demonstrably, uh, <laughs> one doesn't like to use the words such as superior, but if you look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of research, peer-reviewed mm. research papers that have been done, they show over and over again that there is an awful lot to recommend that. And what makes me sad is that the government... If you look at... For every pound we spend right. helping couples stay together, we spend £5,800 picking yeah. up the okay. fallout of families that fall apart. Why are we not supporting people in creating these families that work? Let's move to the other side of the pond and Andrew Solomon. Um, Andrew, you have dealt with so many different types of families. I think you've researched 300 different families for your book and spent 11 years doing it. Uh, and you yourself have a, a come from a composite or perhaps complex family. I'm not sure what the right term is. Do you agree with what you just heard from Anne? I agree that there's no question that people who have gone through a trauma such as divorce or people who have economic disadvantage or people who are in and out of unstable relationships will have to struggle more in order to be good parents to their children. I think that really the happiest thing for children is to grow up in an atmosphere of love in which not only are they the children loved but so are the people around them uh, very much uh, loved. To have two people who are interacting with them, two adults who are interacting with them who think well of each other, hopefully to have an extended family that, uh, that thinks well of them. So if the issue is whether a nuclear family has to have a mum and a dad, absolutely not. And if the issue is whether there has to be some form of nuclear family with some degree of stability in the life of a child, that I'd agree with entirely.
Right. So, I mean, we could all agree on that. You know, there has to be a stable family. There has to be a warm and loving environment for well, children. You say we the question, agree well, hang on a minute. The question is, can that be provided by a, a gay couple that comes out of gay marriage? That's really how this whole issue started. Well, in terms of whether the evidence shows it can or not, the jury is out simply because it's much too new and it's much too small. And we've talked about 19,000. It's actually 0.15 of our children are brought up in gay families. So we simply don't yeah. know. I can't see any reason why not, right. uh, why that couldn't be equally stable and equally advantaged. But what I want to say is, you say we're all agreed on this, but the government refuses to acknowledge how incredibly important marriage is for children and how incredibly important that stability is. Dan, can I turn to you? Would marriage provide, same-sex marriage, provide the kind of stability that, that you got from, from your parents when they brought you up? Would it help? <clears throat> I don't think my mother would have got married um, to her partner because I don't think she believes in marriage. But she does believe in stability. I don't think they necessarily go hand in hand. It depends on... The, the, well, it, the, the does, it does, with due respect, it gen obviously not in individual cases, doesn't That's right, go yes. hand in hand. Yeah. But generally speaking, mm. it hugely does go hand in hand. That marriage provides stability, or stable couples well, get married no, whichever way around. No, but I think that's right. I agree with you on, on the, the, that's kind of, if you look at the, statist the statistics of it. Right. Andrew, do you want to weigh in? I think that we're. I, Yes, I was just going to say, I think it becomes something of a semantic argument. You know, everybody has agreed that children do better with stability mm -hmm. and that broken homes, which are different from homes that are intentionally constructed in a different model from other homes, broken homes are not particularly nourishing to children. But the idea that we don't have enough information and so we don't know whether gay people are able to love their children adequately or take care of them adequately or provide an environment in which they can grow up healthily. There have been gay parents over a long period of time. There are many studies which demonstrate that children who come from a stable gay household will do just as well as children who come from any other form of stable household. Dan, when well. you were growing up uh, with two mums, this was the only book available. If there had been other books, I mean, if the language of same-sex marriage, of, of, of gay parents bringing up children, had been more commonly available to you, would that have made a difference? I think so. I think so. I think um, our family... Uh thrived very well because we created a community for ourselves. We created support networks. We had our own, you know, we had the gay community. We were looked after, but we would have preferred to be part of the larger community. And it was people with, with you know, uh, retrograde ideas about what the family should be that made it very difficult to be, you know, part of, you know, uh, mainstream mm. society. Right. So we were, we were forced out. And um, it had an effect, but that right. was the only negative effect of okay. growing up in the gay family. We've, I'm sad we've run out of time. Um, Dan Gillespie-Sills, Anne Atkins, Andrew Sullivan, New York, thank you very much indeed.